with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. Welcome back, everyone. It's Andy Penn, the show on Red Card Sports Radio. Wherever you're watching, welcome. Thanks for your company today. We love your company as well as we aim to give you a brand new Samsung Sports Flow. My friends, it's the big Red Card Sports Radio football challenge brought to you by Samsung Sports Flow, the best quiz name in the world. What you have to do is tell us the most famous football player you have met in your life and whether you've interacted with them. Okay, uh, get involved. We're on the Red Card um, Sports Radio channel on Samsung Sports Flow. And uh, yeah, get involved. Talking of big players or possible big players that you might have met that have been making a move recently, it was the transfer window shut during the week, so we thought we'd keep you bang up to speed, or at least give you a recap of what happened. Nicholas Lim's got the uh, what went down during the week. Yeah, not very inspiring this uh, deadline day. The biggest deal, Giannelli Imbula from Porto, he signed for Stoke City for £18.3 million. Pounds, a lot of money thrown around there. Omaniase from Lokomotiv Moscow, once the top scorer in Russia, he joined Everton for £13.5 million. Pounds. A lot of loan deals as well. Uh, Sedo Dumbia, probably the biggest one, from Roma to Newcastle on loan. Eder from Swansea City to Lille on loan. Federico Fazio, he from Tottenham, he, he goes back to Sevilla on loan. Uh, Bruno Zuculini, one of the highest rated youngsters at Manchester City, he goes to AEK Athens, also on loan. Matthew Debussy, he also goes on loan so that he can get some first team football. He goes from Arsenal to Bordeaux for the rest of the season. Stephen Fletcher, Scottish international, from Sunderland to Marseille, also a temporary move. Leroy Fair, another temporary move. Q- QPR to Swansea City. And Marco Van, K- Hink- Marco Van Hinkle, Chelsea to PSV Eindhoven on loan. Going with the tradition of the Chelsea right there. And finally, James Madison from Coventry City to Norwich for an undisclosed fee. But he was then loaned back to Coventry City. Lots of loans going on in the past week. We've managed to loan a superstar in the studio today. A 16-year career in the S-League, international goalkeeper, six S-League titles, four Singapore Cups. It's none other than Cheryl Jantan. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Andy. All right. How's it going? Listen, bro, (laughs) this time of year, okay, because you've done this for the last 16 years, right? This time of year, you shouldn't be stuck in an office anywhere. You should, what you should be, out there pre-season, running your socks off, doing the 2.4, doing your beat tests. You, my friend, and I know this for a fact, are missing it. No, I think you got it all wrong. Um, I miss being with the guys. I miss pre-season tour. You know, going to Bangkok, you know, having some fun in the hotel room with the guys. I miss the banter, definitely. I don't miss much of the running. Been doing a little bit on my own, but nothing too much. <laughs> I don't have a 2.4 to pass now. Um, I was happy to see Alex the other night. Um, I still have lots of banter with him. Yeah. Um, but you miss that banter special, isn't it, within the football? I, I, I would smash the young kids, you know, back. Even last year when I was at home United, yeah. I'll smash the young kids, you know. <laughs> they come in, in late for training, you know, I'll give them... They won't be happy, definitely, but, you know... So you are missing it? From what I can tell, you, it sounds like, apart from the Not, running, you're yeah. missing it? Yeah, you're right, you're right there. You're right, and, and you seem to me still fit enough to be able to play a few years. With, with hindsight, do you, do, like, right now, are you thinking, you know what, S-League this year, I reckon it's going to be that good that I, I reckon I could have played my part um, in a way yes you know when German came came along and the Lions Shore players coming back to the league um, there was this little tinge in my in me that says that perhaps you should have taken the offer I got late last year I had two offers what, what were the offers um, one was from a top club and one was from a lower club but I've made up my mind since June. So, so, so Gelang and uh, <laughs> Haugang. Gelang and Haugang, right? Uh, I wish Gelang called. You know, it would yeah. be a great that way to end good. my career. Yeah. You know, that's where I started. Yeah. But they're going to do well this year. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm going to root for them. Staying at Bedok myself, you know. I think we should go to games together. Let's go, bro. Perfect. 
I'm well up for that. Um, so how is it post football then? What, what's been keeping you busy? Um, proposals. <laughs> um, we're busy with the Lion City Cup. Because right. I mean, we're just to, just to let everyone know, we're we're very happy to have welcomed Sharal into the Red Card family. Um, but you're more on the sort of events activation side, and yes. But you've also been best friends with Jermaine Pennant as well. I, I have. For, no, I think I played a big part in making him sign for Tampines. <laughs> I think you did. I think you did. I, yeah, I was telling him what to expect, you know, from his stay here. And pre presumably, you were brutally honest. Yes. Like you, you weren't sugarcoating everything, right? Because no, it uh, can be pretty tough here on uh, a Monday no night me, in yeah. Jurong West, right? There's no me. I thought, I mean, honest person, I, I'll say what I feel. Um, I told him what to expect. Um, I told him players will be kicking up his ankles for the first few games. They want to put it in their Facebook and you know up their status. You no, know, I've kicked Jermaine <laughs> up his ass. Oops. <laughs> so, I think I've told him what to expect. Um, and you were with him twenty four seven. Almost, yeah. My wife almost told me to sleep <laughs> outside. <laughs> and he's a, he's a, look, peel it all back. He's a nice bloke. He is. Um, since day one, since at the airport, you know, no ass about him. Um, like I said, you know, he played at the highest level at, at the best club. But he came here, he's down to earth, humble. Great guy, great guy. Yeah. Yeah, really good. And the, the best picture you you sent me was him doing his washing, you know, with a washing machine behind yeah, him. Yeah, I, I told him, yeah, back home, you know, you get people doing it for you. Back here, you're on your own. <laughs> brilliant. Hey, well done for that, organising all that. Brilliant. Absolutely superb. And I think it does set up a very fascinating um, S-League season. But you, you're a man who's, you've seen it all. You've seen the over cra overflowing crowds at an S-League game right to the state that it is in today. That was why I wanted to become a professional. I think I've spoke this many times. I was a ball picker for Geelong back then. Um, the first couple of years, you know, Bedok Stadium, there's this hill. It was overflowing, you know, there was no space in the stands. Um, the last five years, or even more actually, it's been empty. That must hurt you it, to see it that. It hurt, it affected my motivation. Um, but in a way, I guess it, it just provided me a path to look elsewhere. I guess that's where I'm here now. And why is that? Why? Why? Where, where have the fans gone? What? What's happened? Whew. It's tough. You know? It's a chicken and egg question. There. Yeah. You know? We got. We had the Maki scheme before. I always believed that the foreign players would be a crucial part of the league. But I guess the players that came back then two years ago was it? They didn't have that pull factor, but this year we saw with the two games German played. We have thousand five, two thousand. It's pull factor, right? It's back. Yes. Okay. Well, but you guys, I mean, sorry, you guys, the, the professionals still need to deliver a product, right? Yes. And um, it needs to also be a, um, a more of a, a whole experience. I need, I need to go to the game. I need to have beers. I need to have the time spot on for me. You know. And I will be prepared to, to make an effort. So you're a goalkeeper, right? Yeah. <laughs> now they're a very special breed of people. The old goalkeepers union and, and all. You're either sort of crazy or kind of, I don't know, kind of serious. Or where are you, where are you in the goalkeeping crazy stakes? <laughs> I think I'm in between because I didn't start as a goalkeeper. Don't tell me. Everyone starts off as a striker, right? <laughs> Everyone. You're right. I came for a trial at Geelang, trying to be a superstar striker, but there were like over 100 players vying for that spot. And I turned left, and there's only five vying for the goalkeeper spot. <laughs> so mathematically, you know, I thought, <laughs> and they say the rest is history. Wow, and you're a good size for a goal. Normally, normally Singapore goalkeepers are quite short. Yeah, well, uh, back then I didn't think about size, and we just right. wanted to play, you see. And I'm surprised, huh? I quite enjoy it. <laughs> a lonely yeah. position. Fair. Well, I played um, under 19 Southampton in goal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard that. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. But my strength was not in shop, shop, shot stopping or anything. It was organization. That's you know, just screaming because yeah. the, the less if you actually don't have any work to do you look quite good as a goalkeeper, right? Yeah, occasionally yeah. the old the occasional. But if you can organize four men in front of you to 
watch what they're doing. Were you, were you always a good communicator? Um, it got better with age, um, but I hate it when you know we had nothing to do, and after the game, the people, fans, or even the coach comes to you and say, "Oh, nothing to do, yeah." They didn't see the organization part, you know. Right. The good organization. That's why you know the opponents didn't get through. You've had um, your career's seen highs. It's seen lows as well. I think you've had it all. You made your debut as a fresh 19-year-old back in 99. Six S League titles, four Singapore Cups, uh, Geylang United. Uh, Geylang United it was then, wasn't it? Um, SAFC, you now Warriors, Home United as well. What club, when you say we, when you say I think we're going to win the league, what, who is that club? I had my best playing time at SAFC. Champions the League. Of, the Champions League, the players, you know, you had Tersa, Chaiman, Alex. I mean, Tersa, if you not played with him, if you played against him, it's a nightmare. But if you played with him, you know, he's the best midfielder. He has brains of close to Zidane, I would say, you know, I, I'm not exaggerating. Um, there were some real characters in that essay. Yes, we had Daniel Bennett, we had John Wilkinson, you know. We he still calls you the the best goalkeeper Singapore has ever yeah, seen. He, he, he says that I make saves with my ears. You know. <laughs> he he reckon I have, <laughs> he says I got big ears. I, I, nah, he's just jealous. You know. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, bro! What a team! And they, they were, and the Champions League ex exploits were were, were brilliant as yeah, well, right? We actually played the group proper. You see, yeah, yeah we travelled to Suwon. We played Gamba. We played Kashima. I mean, we got hammered, but. It was an experience. No money can buy, you know. Yeah. Even right now, you can only play in the, in the qualifiers. So that's something that I wouldn't change for anything. I watched your highlights back, actually. I spent, spent the week looking back at your highlights. And after every good save, but most of your saves, by the way, bro, are pretty much for the cameras. <laughs> I've noticed. There's a lot of diving after yeah. you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I think th that's the trademark for all the people. <laughs> but then you'd always follow it up, always, right? Check, the, honest, I swear to God, check the highlights. You'd always follow it up with a, with a grimace. You always go, <laughs> seriously. Especially if it's a live game, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's funny, man. Uh, Singapore International as well. Um, part of the 2004 ASEAN Football Championship winning side under Raddy. What was Raddy like? I think he's he's a great coach. Yeah. Um, he he prepares the team very well. I think he's very meticulous in in planning for matches. Um, the team we had back then was also very young, very eager. Um, I wasn't the number one then, but the competition for the sport was was good. Mental. My, yeah, myself, Hassan, and Liner. Yeah. You know? So who's the best out of you three then? Um, on on paper, we all had a great. Yeah. We, we, we were all great, you know. We, we were playing for in each other's team. We, we, we were the number one choice for clubs and we had good games. I mean, back then you have to play regularly for your club to be a call-up for a national team. But I know it's not really the case now. Now, you just need to be young, perhaps. Yeah, but I mean, three great goalkeepers, right? Yes, yes. Two gone, one left. Hassan yeah. will be... Yeah. He's doing well in time. Well, well, he finished tenth last year, but he's doing okay, right? He won goalkeeper of the year or something, or he won player of the year for yes. his, his club. But you're saying that you're the best out of the, those three. That's good to know, bro. Yes, well thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's what I, I need to touch on, and I know this has been very much a flavour of your career, but I think it's made who you are because you're very sort of honest man. You're a very honest man, very responsible man. And I think football's football's helped to put you into that standing, right? Because I think you've, always, you, you, from what I can see, you've learned to. You're always educating yourself. Your bachelor's a uh, uh, sports um, management degree. Yeah, sports management. Well, that's awesome, right? It's all right, not too bad. <laughs> well, that's pretty good for a pro footballer. But you're always thinking that that step ahead. But I have to take you back to 19th of December 2002. Uh, well, yeah, well, I know. Yeah, well, I know, yeah. but you grimace now. But that's made you the man that you are today, isn't it? Yes, it has actually. Yeah, it, it played a big part. Um, it was my first international tournament. I got the, the nod based on the performance I had for my club. We were the champions. Um, person, coach was a very honest coach, uh, very fair, 
you know, I could have lost the place to another more experienced keeper, but I had a good season. The pre the matches prior to the cup, I had a good run. Um, everything went well that year till the first match. It was, I guess, one of those days that didn't actually work out for me, you know. Save that I should have made, I failed to, to, to make it count. Um, the team, all together, we didn't play well as a unit. We considered early. And, and to lose 4-0, it, 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 there's no excuse. To Malaysia, especially. To Malaysia, yeah. yeah. But, but, I guess, you know, being a goalkeeper, you, you bear brunt of. Well, and you did though. I mean, you did bear the the brunt because you were the scapegoat. I feel I was make the scapegoat, and that one tournament kind of didn't allow me to get back to the team because after that, after that year, I was in and out of the national team till two thousand six. I think there was no call up till twenty ten. So, well. Of course, uh, um, there was no reason that put out to me why I wasn't called up. That was never explained to you? Never explained. I had I, I won four S-League titles yeah. in that five years. I wasn't called up. So there was a lot of question mark. So I guess... But when, when you when you called up by the CPIB and interrogated by the CPIB? Yes, that was. Well, that's that's this. Th and there seems to be a coincidence between that happening yes, and you not um, getting called up. Well, that must be I, horrific. It was, but you see, I, I I did nothing wrong. You know, I got. I, I told them about an offer I was I I received. What was and, the offer? To lose a game for a friendly game, a friendly game against Malaysia. I was with the team with Hassan. I was with Hassan. And I didn't play. I didn't play. And we lost two, two zero, two one. After that, I got called up. As in, they make me look like I'm guilty, instead of helping out with the investigation. That's how I felt. Yeah, because you I, didn't I, they get a, you get arrested as as a as opposed to a bit helping out, don't you? I think. I mean, it should be. I was like so called guilty before charge right. yeah but yeah i spent three days there it wasn't pleasant but how old uh, were you then 24 24 25 i think it's not much of it, it's difficult to be to be there three days and getting questioned every two hours throughout the night you know it was mentally were they questioning you as if you were guilty in some ways yeah wow so, but I guess it, it was another phase of my life that made me stronger because, you know, I, I know I wasn't guilty. I think everybody knows. I guess it's just life of a goalkeeper, you know, when yeah. goals get conceded, you'll be the first to be looked at. Um, but other than that, you know, I had a great career, I think. Yeah, any... Um I was going to ask any regrets, but I, I just need to just okay, the last question on the the four nil drubbing by Malaysia, because P J Roberts always tells me right he goes he goes you you know what he said there's nothing more character building than missing a penalty in a penalty shootout because <laughs> he's done it right so these are all part that parts of the, that complete us right and make us yeah. I read that um, I don't remember it at the time although I was in Singapore that. You were misquoted in the press for blaming the fans. Yes, what happened? I remember. Uh, I think three times they asked me for a quote, and, and along the line, I said, like you know, when we were singing the na we were singing the national anthem, you know, the hair at, at the back stood. You know, it, it's a good feeling, but I I don't know how the reporter put it that you know I blame the fans for you know making me feel nervous during the national anthem and well people read believe what they read <laughs> and there's 40,000 watching this game by the yeah. way yeah yeah so that's what you said the hairs on your back were standing up I because felt it, yeah you make me feel nervous you know having the hairs stand up yeah but I don't know how the reporter got 
And then that got misconstrued that yeah. the fans put too much pressure on you and it was their fault rather yep. than your fault. For Any regrets on your career? Regret. I mean, don't worry, we'll get yeah, to all yeah. the good stuff in a minute, bro. <laughs> There's a few regrets, definitely. Um, of course, this Malaysia game. Yeah. That would be one. Secondly, would be meeting the guy who offered me, who tried to bribe me. That was the number two. On the context of having me in for a coaching job. Uh, yeah, I would say these two. Yeah, and they're, they're the two sort of major defining points of your career, right? Apart from winning medals. Yeah. You know? And that, what, what a better feeling. And winning a national call up as well. How proud. For anyone who's never represented their country, can you put it into words just what it means? You know, I, I've never got a chance to represent at youth level because they have their own set of goalkeepers back then. So to be called up. For the, my first game was against Brunei in '99 as a 19 year old who have not even played an athletic game. Wow. Um, you know, I can't sleep the night before. Uh, I was speaking to my mom and dad back then, you know. They were just trying to keep me calm, watch a lot of YouTube videos, you know, try to get inspirations from top keepers. But, you know, it, it, it's a feeling that I miss. Even the last five years of my career, I missed because I didn't get to play any national team games, singing the national anthem. It was something that I missed. What were those celebrations like in 2004? It was massive, I think. Yes. I could remember there was a bus that toured the whole Orchard Road. And, and every there were like, I think, over 10,000 fans at Takashimaya you know, waiting for us. It was a nice feeling, you know. I guess football is the only, one of the only sport that could bring 40, 50,000 people together, you know. It doesn't matter your race. And, and I hope we could get this at club level. You know, it's far-fetched, but I think it's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, if, if um, a nation such as Singapore has got enough passion about football, and it should be on whatever level, then let's bring it on, right? I yeah. Um, what was the craziest thing that happened that night though was there anything double super crazy that happened like you must have gone out for a few drinks afterwards i can't remember but oh it must have been but means it sounds very good sounds like great fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, i'm guessing there's no sort of drinking culture in singapore like there was in england back in sort of 80s 90s or is there was there a bit of a party um, not too much because maybe per perhaps for myself I, I I'm not really the party kind. Perhaps I don't I don't really go out and party so much. Um, I was quite a dedicated player back then. I was really focused to to be a professional and I took work seriously. I, I sacrificed a lot of my youth time. I didn't go out with friends. Instead, you no, know, I go to trainings. And that's why you become a professional footballer. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's what happens, right? You put that dedication and passion yeah. in, and you eat well as well. Uh, I try to eat. It's not. It's not easy in Singapore. No, you know? it's not. And especially for the locals. I, I understand during the early days. You know, we stay with our parents, and <laughs> we stay with parents, and you know, our parents they would cook the Malay dishes. Right. It's difficult not to eat nasi lemak every morning. <laughs> but but it, it, I did try to change myself, especially when I hit the mid twenties. Um, after after I got married, definitely you know it's it, it's easier because I have to cook my own meals. Yeah, but yeah. I think right now I think it, it's one focus that the young player should should have. Well, when you were a young player, you had the opportunity to go to Arsenal and train with them. Ah, uh, that's great. Was it? It's awesome. You know, how did that come about? I don't really know how it came about, but the chairman back then, Geelang United chairman, Patrick Ang, he, he, he's another nice guy. Um, he is so dedicated, so passionate. One day he just came to me and Lionel and said, you guys are going to Arsenal. And he was like, we, we, we didn't have any expression. In, like, Arsenal Football Club, no, we asked him, say, yeah, yeah, I know someone there and we'll send you there for, for a month. So we ended up being there for five weeks wow. in cold November. But no regrets, you know, we, we enjoy every... So where were they board. training then? What, what was the training? Uh, Colony. Right, yeah, yeah. of course, Colony, yeah, okay. Yeah. So w who was in the team? 
Uh, David Simon was there. Wow. John Lukic. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, Kanu, Berkham, Lumberg, Henri. And the best part was that it, it's a training ground, training center. So we were just training next to each other and, and we always meet at the same um, restaurant. They have, they have their own chef, you know, we have a nice buffet spread. And we, we, we sit in the same same room, basically. Wow. Yeah. Did you get a chance to play against them or with them? No, I, I played against um, Ashley Cole. Because Ashley Cole, back then, he was breaking into the first team. So I was I trained the reserves. So so Ashley was there. Um, so who, was, who else was there? Was <laughs> Jermaine was there, right? <laughs> he, he, he just signed for Arsenal. He was 15 back then. For a cool £2 million. Pounds. Yeah, and, and well, seeing him then at that age, he, that must have seen that like a, a world away. Seeing a 15 year old kid sign for two million pounds. But I could see how, so if I could use the word mischievous, right. <laughs> he came to training <laughs> a few times with a pair of Nike boots on his right and then Adidas on his left. I mean, that you could see how he is, you know, he's a little bit crazy. <laughs> but good players, good players. Um, Who else would have been in that reserve? Uh, David Bentley? Bentley was there. Yeah, they were both. Same age category, yeah. 15, 16. And they was they were special talent. All three of those ben, you mentioned, yeah. special talents. Ben Lee was, he was class, but he's just unfortunate that he didn't turn out to be the player he could yeah. have. Yeah, only Ashley sort of seems to have gone through. Any other? Can you remember any other players that were probably done from that Arsenal? The senior team, first team. Well, no, I mean from that reserve team from that you would have team. played. Um, but still, Burkham, Cameron, how cool was that, man? Did you get have any one on one with um, David Seaman? Did he give you any I advice? I spoke to David Seaman, was doing his rehab. He was out injured for over a month. But you know what opened my eyes, and you know, even like knows that he was coming to recovery. To, he was training harder than the normal players, which I took that lesson I took back home. You know, when you are down injured, you should be working twice as hard. Wow. Right to get back to the first team. Th that's one of the important lessons I got. Did you ever get, ever get the chance to talk to John Burridge when he was here? I didn't see him. John no? Burridge, no, no. I, but well, I was just thinking about inspirational goalkeepers. That's all. And he was he'd work as hard as anyone. And that's yeah, why he's yeah, the yeah. oldest player ever to play in the Premier League. Right? I'm surprised as a goalkeeper you wouldn't have gone and sought him, sought after him. No, I think he's quite inspirational, Budgie. He is. Uh, it's crazy. I just spoke to him <laughs> a few times <laughs> right. while he was in Singapore. Yeah. Oh, so you have spoken to him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Dedicated. Yes. C crazy. As That's well. understatement, yeah. isn't it? Uh, we're with uh, Cheryl Jantan, uh, former Singapore international, former S League of sixteen years uh, goalkeeper, uh, winner of six S League titles, four Singapore Cups. Um, but how much does he know about his career? I think it's time to play <laughs> the Cheryl Jantan quiz. Your contestant today is Cheryl Jantan. Hey Cheryl, how you doing bro? Not too bad. Hey, here's a quiz on you. How many can you get right? 10 questions. Who handed you your first national team call up in 1988? 98. 1988, right? Um, uh, got, sorry, I got. 99, I think. It was 99, yeah, it was 90, I thought it was 99. Yeah, I'm just reading off the, hey, yeah. is Pratap there? Is he there? <laughs> Right, so this is where the interns get a markdown. Right, right, hey, Pratap, Pratap, one thing. I ask you to do one thing. Get him on the mic. Can, can I see it? Bro, right, this is intern Pratap. Are you, yeah. I mean, normally I proof all the work that these boys do. Hey, bro, your first question. Yeah, man. He, is he who did. handed your first national team call up in 1988? Firstly, he would have been <laughs> nine. He would have been nine. Isn't so he it would have been. Yeah? Huh? Isn't it 1998? 90, yeah, but you've written 88 here. Oh, okay. That's a typo, but it's 1998. Thank it, you. Just to clear. So who, who was it who I handed? Vincent Subramaniam. Is correct. Yeah, correct? Yeah. Question number two How many team honours have you won with the Singapore Armed Forces? Six. Seven, sorry. Four leagues, five leagues, three cups, eight. eight. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that you remember. We um, uh, had Carol, Carol Amri on the show, right? Like, how many goals have you scored in the S League? He's like, 
55. We're like, it's 84, man. <laughs> There's a 30 difference. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, when was your first S League triumph? 2001, Geelong United. Geelong Bole. In which year were you awarded the Yo's People's Choice Award? 2010. <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> when, who did you face in your international debut? Uruguay. Uruguay. Do you remember the score in that? 2 1. Man on the match. No. Yes. Who scored for them? Not Forlan. No. But he was playing in that. Yeah. No. There was the World Cup team. In Diego Forlan's never scored against you. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's our menu. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, how many appearances did you make for SAFFC? It's a tough one. It's a number one. Patap loves a number question, right, Patap? Um, I reckon 200 and 40 two to nine good good effort though when were you named SAFC SAFFC player of the year 2010 what's up 2009 2009 <laughs> <laughs> um, you were second choice for Geylang in 2000 but who was first choice Lutz Fun and Steel Yes. Yeah, For chain. extra point, can you spell Lutz Fan and Steel? L U T Z P F A N N E S T I E L. Yeah, you missed an N, <laughs> but yeah, fair play. <laughs> uh, you were nominated for the Young Player of the Year in 2002, but you eventually lost out. Who did you lose out to? That's easy. No Alam Shah. No Alam Shah. And how many seasons did you play in the S League? 16. Just, yeah, so that's 10 out of 10, bro. Hey, <laughs> let's talk about um, this exodus. We, talk about, we spoke about Nur Alam Shah there. Thanks, Patat, by the way. That was awesome. Well done. Apart from the first question. Um, hey, look, the S League has seen a bit of an exodus of uh, veteran players, right? Um, yep. Nur Alam Shah, uh, Maz Rizwan, Mats Turi, uh, Ridwan Mohammed. So. This Lions 12 coming back into the S League, that's not a good thing, is it? No, I, I, I think I disagree. I think it's a good thing because we need the good players, the best players of, in Singapore to Yeah, but playing. what, at the expense of the senior pros, of the veteran players? Are they, do you guys get a fair deal? Do the, do the older players within the S League get a fair deal? Well, um, I definitely did not lose I didn't lose the job because of them coming. So I can't say about um, Ridwan or... But if you're good enough, there'll be clubs buying for your well, signature. I, you know? True, I get that. But look at you guys, you're scrambling year to year on 11 month contracts, right? Okay, I year think, to I, year. I think okay, it's good that you brought this up. I think I've got that a lot of times, even my friends asking me, I've never, in my 16 years, I've never had a year contract. I had three year contracts at most clubs. And I see that because I was playing for good clubs, you know. I guess if you want to have good contracts, you have to train well, train hard, play well, and hopefully the big clubs offer you a good contract. I think, I think those on 11 month contracts, they are playing for the smaller clubs where budget is limited i'm not saying it's right i think it's wrong you still have to sign place on the chairman contract but you know i think some of these players have to stop whining and perhaps look at themselves you know have you worked hard enough to 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 get a call from a big club and get a good chairman 24 months contract um i feel for those who get 11 months i think i think it's it's, it's rubbish you know it's tough yeah. it, 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 any it, walk of life yeah. that's tough and 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 after five six months in you know you are scrambling for a job or for another contract you know, it, it's not i think it's quite unprofessional for 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 the athletic to have to be in such a situation um having said that i think uh, the players have to take a look at themselves and and see how they can make situation better for them would you like to get back involved with the game? I know you're quite close to it at Red Card because you're working on some football projects, but have you got any aspirations, ambitions to get back into working with the Singapore football? I, I, in fact, I, I would like to be involved in 
goalkeeping coaching. You know, I think it's a specialist position that. I think so. Yeah. I think you have to be. You have to play in the game to know to to be able to understand and to be to coach. Um, uh, I I did apply for a job at FAS as a goalkeeper coach, but um, recently, but unfortunately, um, it got rejected. Based uh, on what? No reasons for stall. Um, okay. But have you got any go have you got any coaching qualifications? Yeah, I got one, but you know they could always build me up, you know. Um, but it's okay. Um, I guess there might be better coaches. I, I assume um, the time will come. But I would like to stay in the game as a goalkeeper coach um, on a part-time basis, of course, because I think my first priority is still here at Red Card. I think I'm enjoying life here. Um, I'm still involved with sports. And, uh, we we need some more banter, I think, at work now. Now that yeah. you've reminded me, that's one of the things that you're missing. Yeah, I think I need. We need to give it, give Nick. We need to give him some. When he walks in a little bit late, we need to hammer him. No, you will never find me late. I know. Well, this is the <laughs> thing about seriously. The <laughs> best thing I've noticed about all of you guys, you, you retired footballers, and I, and I mentioned my close friends, PJ Roberts and John Wilkinson, and the like. You guys have. You guys did this for 17, 18 years, sixteen years. Getting up at the right time, training, looking after yourself. It's so disciplined. It's so admirable. As opposed to me, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Which is why I think you guys make great employees. I, I guess professional football, it builds your character, you know. Yeah. A lot, um, like you say, discipline, you know, fitness, you know, dedication. You know? Yeah. Everything I do here, you know, I put a lot of work and dedication into it. it doesn't only has to be sport or football yeah so so I, I i'm happy that i could bring what i learned as a professional and bring it over here to red cut yeah no i think absolutely absolutely i think it's uh for any parents that are a bit worried about whether they should put their children through as a professional football or at least encourage them you know all the guys i meet especially sort of the, your generation i'm not sure about the older ones but you realise how important it was to look after yourself and how important it is to be timely and dedicated. So, Yeah, I, I would say one more thing, no respect. You know, when I was young, you know, when, when I see players like Fandi or, you know, Cardi or David Lee, you know, we keep quiet and we we would w like tiptoe past them, you know, because we are so, we won't see, I won't be afraid, but we respect them. You know, we don't make so much noise and, and, and those things, you no. Know, it, it developed me, you know. Now I have a lot of respect to everybody I, have, I I meet. I think it's important to have respect also. You've been in the game this long. Let's go through, position by position, with the players that you've played with, your best starting 11. Okay, I'll go through the position. You name me the best player and the reason why. In goal. Me. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because I'm the best in what I do. Right back. Um, Kade. He, he goes up and down. Discipline, play, discipline. Left back. Um, Razale Kalek. He doesn't have a left foot, but I like his work ethic and the heart he's, he put in into matches. Your centre back pairing. No Raman, and I'd say that this is a tough one. What, who, are the, some, who are the some of the guys that you're considering? I'm trying to look through the national players. Um, recent ones don't really caught my eye. Uh, I put can I put Mohamed Kapo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Done. World Cup, World Cup player. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Okay, are you having four in the midfield or just three in midfield? I play four. We play four in midfield. Yeah. Left wing. Left wing, um, I like someone who takes on man and also can defend. Um, uh, most of them I know can attack but can defend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let me choose the mid. Yeah, the go middle on. too. Um, yeah. Third side, definitely. And Masahiro Fukasawa, if you remember him, workhorse runs up and down every blade of the grass he covers um okay got that two covered right midfielder output 
I put John there for the reason that uh, if gonna, he didn't, he'd scold yeah, you. Yeah, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna text me later. <laughs> and <laughs> but, but yeah, and the left tough one. Left. You can play with three up front. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll put. Um, I put Alex because um, he's some he scores about three hundred goals. But he misses about 700 <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, he scores on the 6 yard walk So we need him there um, <laughs> I, I, I put Can I put Jermaine for the fact that You know You haven't played with him <laughs> Okay Well you played with him in Arsenal training Yeah, it wasn't good enough um, <laughs> No I, uh, <laughs> Attackingly, attackingly, I put Lee Kuan Wu behind the two strikers. Okay, and, and the, and the and last striker. The last one would be. So you never played with Fandy or any of you? That was no, no. Uh, uh, no. According to um, Pratap, you have you made your debut in nineteen eighty eight. Um, one more. Give me a second. I like to give me a second. I can't give you a second. It's radio, man. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah we should. Money, right? <laughs> 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 I'll right. put Fandy. I'll put Fandy. Yeah, because what? You played with him? In I trained with him. Trained. There you go. Yeah. Done. Hey, not a bad team, bro. Hey, not a bad team at all. Yeah, right? I need to see the attacking and defensive aspects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm thinking like a coach now. <laughs> It'd be kind of like a Newcastle team, I think. Lots of goals scored, but. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. So, okay, let's just wrap this up because I, I, I feel like. Um, I haven't celebrated your career as what as much as I should have done. Nah, you don't, Cheryl. No, because I thought we got a bit serious. You know, got a bit light. We got a bit serious, and then because you've had that many good moments, man, you don't just win that many, many um, championships, right? Without having just a fantastic time. Like, what was the? Okay, let's let's go through it. The highlight of your career would be the my first international game the, against Uruguay. The performance and the opponent itself. Yeah, yeah, massive. And that must have just that must have made you a, be a better player than you ever possibly could have been. Yeah, that it, one it, performance. You it know? made me feel like oh, I, I I can perform at a high level. You know? It's like I'd, I've done basically in my broadcasting career, I've done one good show. Seriously, and now I think I have. I know when it was. But I've ridden off the back of that for years, <laughs> but only because I think, oh, I can achieve that sort of level where everything, all the links come off straight. You know, everything looks good. I don't mumble, and I think, yeah, I'm a, I can be a presenter. <laughs> oh, you might not look, <laughs> look at me now. You might be thinking, well, like, yeah. But yeah, it's true. It's very crazy things. Hey, these defining moments in our life. Who was the laziest, tr laziest footballer you ever trained with or worked with? Laziest. He was always late for training or never ran. Or I, I I know Erwin Gunawan at SFFC. He was always late. God knows why. Not married, no kids. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> yeah. And who, who's the fittest player you've ever played with? Alex is one of them. Was he? I mean, he's yeah. a freak. Yeah. Have you read his book? I got a better book for you to read. So, so that um a better book than alex's <laughs> don't, don't tell him that <laughs> just say yeah i've read it and then tell me but i've also got another i asked him for a book he says he has no book the boy, no he says he has to buy them he has to buy them if he's gonna give them to you <laughs> but you can't hey friends if true friends would pay the yeah, money friends. right uh, we are friends <laughs> <laughs> no true friends okay. would pay the money to support right I will, let me finish my book first and i'll get his oh that's uh, gonna be that's the better book is it i'll just wait for december it might be on sale or something <laughs> <laughs> it's one yeah it will do you buy it for 99 cents on uh, on amazon hey fair play to him that's a good book yeah so that's what i heard yeah yeah good story good story good for him yeah. So, but yours is the better book. Is that, was, this, was this what you? Uh, I like to read on on goalkeepers, and I think I think the book that I text you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it called? Uh, it's about Robert Enke, the right, former German yes. goalkeeper who who committed suicide. Yes. Pressure. 
There's yeah. Good, yeah. And that's fairly recent, isn't it, Inca, isn't uh, it? 2008 or something. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm asking Cheryl Jansen about his favourites, his bests. Who was the smelliest you've ever come across in the changing room? Smelliest? Um, there used to be a player, Razali Johari. He was was a very talented left-legged. We call him Diego. He would use his towel for three months without washing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and after training, you know, when we go for away trips, you know, after training, he would straight away just lie down on his bed without washing. Or he's not a dirty player. He just he doesn't care. <laughs> he just doesn't <laughs> care. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, no. I think that, that seems to be a common theme. There's always seems to be one player, Nick, right, that doesn't like to shower down. Um, what is your what's the best rumor you've heard about yourself when you were playing? No, I don't think there was any. No. I think that was about me was true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you married now, kids now? Yeah, one f just done four, keeping myself occupied. But that's great, and that's yeah, another that's chapter of your yeah. life as well, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, um, Cheryl, thanks for coming in today. No problem. I know, I know you haven't had to come far because you're yeah, the your desk. To, is I have to go back <laughs> to my desk now. <laughs> But still, it's the first unique time that we. Oh, we had you on the show once, didn't we? Yeah. We were talking about S League. Is there? A, or do, do, is there anything you want to say about S League? You want to give it a bash, or give it a, a prop, or give it a, or, or any views or opinions you want to tell the FAS, or is that for another time? No, that's for another time. Okay. But I, I think uh, a lot of it has to go with the product, and and the players play a big part. You know, I think play good football and let the club do the the rest, and hopefully the fans will come. Cheryl, thanks for your time today. No problem, mate. I'll see you Monday. <laughs> 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 oh, brilliant. Cheryl Jantan there, who told us about his 16-year career in the S-League, the highs and the lows and playing for Singapore. Awesome stuff. Uh, still plenty more to come on the Andy Pender Show. Tomorrow on Barclays Premier League Live, Bournemouth versus Arsenal from the Vitality Stadium. Onto the boots of Stanislas who controls it and then a Foby with a diving header and then only gets a hand to him, but he can't keep it out. Still going Gosling, Richie, great save and a Foby turns it in and Bournemouth take the lead, three and three for Benic and Foby. Full credit to the players for how they responded really to the challenges set this season so far. I've uh, been very, very pleased with the mentality of the group, how they've approached the big games and the, and the games against the teams around us recently. We've responded really well, so the next challenge is now is to continue that consistency and that's what we're looking to do. Turns it back into Campbell. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! And for the first time tonight, the Gunners lead at Anfield in what is turning into an Absolute classic. Cross it goes towards Giroud, headed one by Dummett up in the air. Giroud's going to win the second ball. It's towards Cotielny, who pokes it home for Arsenal. And it is not on Cotielny who breaks the deadlock. You have to believe in what we do. I uh, we are just to reassure you, we do not try to go down. You know, <laughs> 45, we have 45 points. And uh, if you panic uh, in the position you are in, you have nothing to do in our job. Followed by Chelsea versus Manchester United from Stamford Bridge. And wait, everybody else in the middle will come for Ivanovic to try and return it. Oh, Chelsea lead this time. Diego Costa on the near post to apply the finishing touch. They've made their pressure play. Zuma gets it up in the air. Ivanovic picks it up. Chance for John Terry! <laughs> John Terry! For Chelsea in the eighth minute of added time! His first goal of the season! To get on fourth position, you need, to, you need to win, win, win. So that's very, very, very difficult. And the other two legs are uh, FA Cup, which we have now to confront uh, Man City, with, which I consider is uh, a very early final. And Champions League, that's where we're aiming. Rooney made an excellent run through. It's coming instead to Marcel. Here's Rooney! And this time he's got his goal! 3 0 to Manchester United! Short in towards Fellaini, out to the bar! Rooney! Oh, it's a phenomenal volley on the rebound by Wayne Rooney! Manchester United lead at Anfield! And pretty much against the run of 78 minutes of play, Manchester United lead Liverpool by goal to nil! We have the feeling, and, and that's because we are winning in a row uh, two times and, and with. Uh, 
sparkling football, I think, with goals, with clean sheets against opponents who were in, in a great form. It's not a difference in my feelings. That's all coming up tomorrow on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. on Red Card Sports Radio. It's the Andy Penner Show on Red Card Sports Radio. We're giving you the chance each month to win a brand new Samsung phone. It's the big Red Card Sports Radio Football Challenge. It's the longest sports quiz name in the world, but we love it. It's brought to you by Samsung Sports Flow. Last month, we asked you for your best chart. Many thanks for getting involved, and many thanks for your entries. This month, we want to know who is the most famous footballer you met and what happened. Everyone's got a story, right? Everyone's got a story, so let us know who uh, the most famous uh, uh, player you've ever met is. Uh, mine, I think, is Mark Wright, <laughs> right? Liverpool defender way back when, but he was the first one, and he was the first one to sign sign a match ball, and he, the first professional footballer to ever swear at me as well. Nick, what was your what was your most famous footballer you've ever met? Oh well, if you're talking about someone I actually really interacted with, um, <laughs> well, as opposed to store. Well, I've seen like the, the most of the Liverpool senior team when they came down, but I've no, I didn't actually interact with them. Right. Well, I've interacted with Wojciech Szczesny, um, oh, nice. a bit of Olivier Giroud. In what sort of way did you interact with? Well, them? well, they came down right oh, for the Barclays so cool. Asia Trophy, so uh, <laughs> I was sat there in a room with three other journalists just kind of in an interview so I think that's the closest I've been up uh, with, a, with a Premier League player although Very it's nice. not in the Premier but League now I can tell you that's not gonna win <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's not, not very Jesney impressive. Ain't gonna win. It's not very impressive, no. <laughs> uh, so get yourself involved. Uh, many star players, of course, were moving during the week. Uh, transfer deadline day happened. So let's get Nicholas just to bring you up to speed with what happened. As the transfer window <gasps> slam shut. Well, a lot of long, long names here. They're very difficult to pronounce. Uh, we start with Stoke City. They've bought uh, Giannelli Imbula from Porto for 18.3 million pounds. A lot of money going going around there. Omaniase from Lokomotiv Moscow. The, at one point, the top scorer in Russia has moved to Everton for £13.5 million. Abdullah Dokore goes from Ren to Watford for an undisclosed fee. Aldabato Penarenda go, uh, goes to Watford also for an undisclosed fee. One of the bigger names, Sedu Dumbia from Roma, joins Newcastle on loan. Ada leaves Swansea City to Lille on loan. Alex Pritchard, youngster from Tottenham, and goes to West Bromwich Albion on loan. And Federico Fazio, uh, the, the non-defender at Tottenham, has gone to Sevilla also on loan. Bruno Zuccolini, one of the youngsters, one of the highly, highly rated youngsters at Manchester City, goes to AEK Athens also on loan. As you can tell, it's not very inspiring so far. Stephen Fletcher from Sunderland goes to Marseille. Matthew Debussy from Arsenal to Bordeaux on loan. He, obvious, of course, won some first-team football ahead of the Euro 2016. Leroy Fair from QPR to Swansea City, also on loan. Marco Van Hinkle continues Chelsea's, uh, Chelsea's what you call tradition of loaning out their best young players. He goes to PSV Eindhoven. And finally, James Madison from, from Coventry City goes to Norwich City for an undisclosed fee and then loaned back to Coventry City. Thanks, Nick. I, I think Aldelberto Penaranda is my Venezuelan name. <laughs> <laughs> it's very close, isn't it? <laughs> it's very good. Right, big special guest in the studio for you today. It's a lot simpler name, but it's a name that's been making the, the Singapore newspapers of late. It's Ferdas Kassim. Hi, Ferdas. Hey, yeah, guys. Hey, everyone. How good. are you, bro? Yeah, I'm good. Very good. Yeah? yeah. Um, nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time, as always. Just for those of... For those people that are watching that don't know who you are, let's find out, shall we? I have a few questions for you. Yeah, Just sure. the basics, man. <laughs> Name? Uh, Fridaus Kasim. Age? 28. Nickname? Fit. Fit? Yeah. How because come? I think uh, the people in Thailand, they cannot pronounce my name, so they call me Fit. So <laughs> Fit. <laughs> Previous football experience? 
Uh, I played uh, Soi football under 18 with Palaba Punggol. Uh, and then I tried the Prime League before I injured my ankle. So I think that I made the full switch to coaching. How did you injure your ankle? Uh, I was training with the Temasi Poly team. And then I think uh, there was this one training session where I got into a brand of a very hard tackle. So I guess I, I couldn't walk for like a month. And I think I needed to go for MRI scan, but I didn't have the money to do it. So I thought, okay, quit playing and just go into coaching. Do you remember the guy that did it? Uh, very much. Uh, no. I don't. I'm not in contact with him, but I still remember his face. I would definitely recognize him if I see him on the streets. I guess it's funny, isn't it? You get one defining moment like that in your yeah. life, mm -hmm. but to him, probably won't even remember, will he? You probably won't even. It would just be water off a duck's back. But for yeah. you, that's changed your life. Um, I think uh, at the moment, even prior to that, I already had the aspiration to become a coach. Uh, but at the same time, I do not want to give up my dreams of playing professional football. So were you any good? I wouldn't say I'm very good technically. I was very average, but I had the tactical advantage. So I guess I as I would say Luis Suarez. Yep. He, oh, he used to play for Liverpool. Yep. God, dear. <laughs> Every Liverpool fan just reminds me of that fact. <laughs> Who is your favourite manager? Um, no one in particular, but I have very big admiration for, um, I would say, Rafa Benitez for his tactical preparation and stuff like that. Yeah, I interviewed him once, you know. Really? Uh, yeah, when he was manager at Chelsea. Uh -huh. And uh, they just lost to Arsenal, mm -hmm. snowing on the day. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, gave me a good interview. Uh, what is the first ever football match you went to? Uh, first football match, that would be 1993. If I'm not wrong, it was uh, Singapore versus some Malaysia Cup game. Uh, let me think, let me recall. I think it was Perlis. Mm. So nice. it was very back then. I think uh, the people my age, uh, we were probably I was probably one of the last one to witness the the last not not the recent Malaysia Cup but the, yeah. the one in the nineties. Yeah. Happy days, bro. Yeah. Happy <laughs> days. And finally, what's the most memorable goal that you've seen? Memorable goal. I would say um, on T V or live? Um or you can have on T V if you haven't seen one live, yeah. I'll I'll I will never get Chubby Olinson's goal though. I think I went crazy after that going in. So uh, that 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 itself, because of the celebration or the, the what happened after that, yeah. I think yeah, I definitely can't forget. Uh, we're with Ferdowsk Kassim, former Haugang United under 18 coach. Now uh, first team coach at TPL side Chinat, the first Singaporean to coach in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Apart from uh, Robert Limler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Bash, Bash also is, was uh, Chomburi right. TD also, by the way. Okay, yeah. so you're not the fair. We, 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 we'll go with our first coach, right? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, how, this, how did this happen, further? Because it's um, some story, right? Yeah, I, I, it all started back in, uh, in November uh, when I took the A license badge uh, in Mentong. How uh, tough is that A license badge? Uh, I would say, apart. Apart from it was the uh, second highest level in AFC, so um, at the moment now uh, I am the youngest uh, A license holder there. Uh, I mean, in in Southeast Asia. Boom! <laughs> Take that. That's on the CV. Yeah. Nice work. But it's a tough course to do. I don't think we. Yes, it's a month. It's we recognise what kind of work goes into achieving that success. Uh, yes, definitely. Because um, you know, when you start from a C license, it's very basic. But when you want to go to a license, you are anyone who goes into that they're actually very serious about taking profession i mean going into professional football what so do you have to do uh i would have to deal with uh tactical uh, a lot of 11 v 11 aside games you know uh, 
um, start to coach there and they, they give you three practicals for you to pass um, so you have to pass two or three so if, if, uh, if in, in an 11 versus 11 setting so it's not as easy as a B and a C because B and a C is a much more scaled down uh, I think so I, I think I guess I, I impressed some of the coaches there so <laughs> which, who recommended me to their clubs so that's where the offer came in right so that's what happened you you, you were on this course mm -hmm. you, you're impressed because there'll there be a few of you doing the course presumably uh, 24 of us yes oh wow yeah it's a good place to do networking and connections and uh yes definitely <laughs> especially when you're overseas uh you get to meet you know especially with my classmates they are all coaches from the TPL sites and also the division one so definitely I think definitely it's like I, I didn't I didn't go there to 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 to, to get a job, but I didn't I just go there to actually get my ear badge. But so you paid you must have paid for this by yourself. Yes. <laughs> wow. Is that is it expensive? Uh, it's close to two thousand. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, right? It's not. What for I me? Mean. For me, I guess yeah, it's well, no. expensive though. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I hear you mean. But I mean, in terms of what it can lead to, I mean, you know, relatively, yeah. it, it seems yeah, a fairly decent investment in, to improve yourself. Mm, on hindsight. Probably yes, you would say so. So uh, you finish the course, mm -hmm. you get the results of the course, and no, we, we have we have yet to receive the result, but I I'm have full confidence that I will do well there. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So potentially the youngest, yes. a, a license holder yeah. in, in Southeast. So what happened next? So you finished the course, you're hanging out, mm -hmm. having a few drinks after after the course, mm -hmm. discussing how it went. What happened next? Um, I met with the um, one of the he uh, head coach from China. I think he 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 was recommended. Uh, I mean, I was recommended to him by uh, another classmate of mine. So the moment I think he got to know that I was flying off, uh, I think on a Tuesday morning. So he f he came all the way down from China to meet me. Wow, on, you know, which club? A uh, China. Okay, what do you mean China? What? China, China. Uh, what, the China national team. So China. China. Oh, China. Sorry, yeah, my China. mistake. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right, got you now. Got you. Yeah, so China. China is a couple of hours north of Bangkok, yes. right? Okay, yes. gotcha. So China, the head coach came to meet me uh, on Monday midnight. So we talk about plans and everything else. So that's where I think I, after he spoke to me and we discussed about our plans. So that's where I realized that, you know, the offer might be on the cards because Prior to this, I thought it was just a casual meeting, you see, just to know. And the, the, this was with um, Isara, was it? The Isara, yes, Isara. Right, Isara yeah. Sri Taro yes. is the, is the yes. head coach. Yeah. And what's he like? Uh, I would say he's a very, very, very modern coach. He's very into sports science and uh, statistics and stuff like that. So very much, uh, very very similar to me, I would say. Very similar to me. So what did he, is that what he saw in you then? He, he saw you as a sort of miniature him? Uh, I would, <laughs> I, I think that's what his friend told, uh, told him because uh, when his friend saw me, uh, his friend is right now is a goalkeeper coach of China. So he saw me doing the analysis and stuff like that. So because I was very uh, st statistic based, uh, very statistic guy. So he feedback to the club that, oh, there's this Singaporean guy who's, who's probably very much like you so and he saw me and saw the stuff I did for my analysis and he's very he was very interested okay uh, and did you have any other offers from any other club uh, I, I had I had two more no uh, <laughs> from from Thailand um, and which had, clubs were they uh, one is from army and one is from uh, Krabi wow you yeah. didn't fancy army no? <laughs> well, Krabi yeah, because, uh, because uh, I'm United uh, head coach also said that Right, uh, was also the cost participant. So okay, mm. but that's uh, that's Hassan Sunny's side, right? Yeah, that would have been perfect. <laughs> wouldn't it? hanging out with Hassan, uh, but I have telling no him what to do. <laughs> but I have no regrets though, because I think at China, uh, definitely, I think this is where I think in terms of all the s facilities and setup. So I I guess this is the right place for me to groom. Okay, mm. let's see how much you know about China. <laughs> and I still feel <laughs> slightly embarrassed thinking that the Chinese <laughs> national team can call me. <laughs> <laughs> How much does Ferdas Kassim, first team coach at TPL side China, know about China? First question, what's the nickname of China? Hanbil. What a nickname that is. Um, I love it. Yeah. They call, don't you, they, they call you the, the, the big bird, the baddest big birds. Also. Yeah, I, I think it's 
hugely influenced by the because uh, they have a bird park there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, they have a popular. I, I would I would say it's a popular bird park. So right. it's just like our. Jurong have you been? Bird park. No, I've never been there. But it's it's like uh, I think a few kilometers away from right. Israel. You've got to go to the bird park. <laughs> um, okay, so we actually called the China hornbills. Yep, mm-hmm. hornbills. Are, Okay, I'm just wondering what song you would sing if you're a Hornbill supporter. <laughs> but my tie's not that good. We'll get on to that in just a second. What's the name of the ground? Carl Blanc Stadium. Done well, done well. <laughs> yeah. What's the, uh, what's the capacity of the ground? I would say it's around 7,000, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know I think it's a bit more. I think, I think you can go up to 12. Yeah, he looks huge though. Does it? Yeah. Is it like purpose built? Uh, yeah, 12,000. Yeah, 7 to 12, I guess. Yeah. Seven to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, what's the name of the chairman? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got, according to the internet, uh-huh. which is a very popular place to do mm-hmm. research, Anucha Nakasai. Mm-hmm. How come you don't know who the chairman uh, is? I don't really remember his name, but right. I think if I were to see his name, but, you, but you've met him, right? Yeah. Well, presumably, times. he signed your contract, no? Uh, no, somebody else didn't. <laughs> okay, well, it'd be nice to him anyway. Where did China finish last season? Twelfth. Very nice. Where did Army finish last season? Tenth. Tenth. Yeah, very good. Who are the sponsors of China? Wang Kanai. Um. Yep, Wang Kanai. Okay, and that's they're the, they're on the front. Yeah, they're main sponsor. Wang and they're uh, well, they, they're a sugar company. Sugar company, yes. I think one of the biggest sugar company in Thailand. Well, nice. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> See what I did there. Um. And who's the most famous uh, player you've got in your side? Famous player? Mm. You've got a couple of Brazilians, right? Yeah, I maybe I have three Brazilians. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think um, famous, we don't have anyone. In fact, we don't have any Thai international, so I wouldn't say anyone famous. But but I would say it's Surachet Ngantip, because I think he had four caps and very, very good player. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay, I think you did really well. That, that's the end of my quiz, <laughs> <laughs> by the way. Um, okay, we're with uh, Ferdas uh, Kasim, who's a uh, first team coach at TP, TPL side China. Um, <coughs> I'd like to get your thoughts and opinions on uh, Thai Premier League football mm-hmm. versus S League, right? Mm-hmm. Were there any offers from the, any S League's club? What S League clubs? None. <laughs> really? I thought that's that was like, the plan. Go there, get your license, come back and Exactly, help. but things didn't, didn't really work out that way, so I, okay. I guess. Well, uh, was there any interest? Mm, none at all because I, I, it's quite difficult for me because i i'm i'm barely an an, an, an unknown here right <laughs> is that the long-term plan though to come back to singapore uh definitely i hope this because I, I i will be in china for one year so i hope i wouldn't just be there for one year and come back but i think eventually definitely i would love to be working here would you prefer to coach <coughs> for hao gang or Geelong? How come and get along? Tough question. <laughs> uh, I would, I would say how come. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, because like, because you you obviously have an affiliation with. Yeah, yeah. Because I I worked with them before, so I more or less knew what's expected, and you know it's it's definitely going to be a you know uh, the club that I'll probably be comfortable with. But you're in the better league at the moment. TPL miles ahead of the S League, right? Absolutely miles ahead of it. Yeah. The support that they get, mm-hmm. the infrastructure, the facilities, the fans, right from top down. I'm, I'm assuming you've got 18 teams in the league, right? 18? Yep. Just to, can you just give us a flavor mm-hmm. of just how professional that league is? Mm-hmm. And then maybe compare it to when maybe where the S League is. Okay, uh, let's talk about the facilities wise. Um, from where I came from, they have their own training grounds. Oh, in fact, if you want to talk about Mentong, I think Mentong and Buriram are their top two teams in, in Thailand. Uh, in terms of facility wise, they have their own um, ice lab. They have their own six pitch for them to train they have on. Their own ice lab? Yep, for recovery purpose. That's mental. <laughs> Same goes, China also has ice oh, lab. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So facility-wise, um, for for China, we have a, even have a clubhouse where uh, even a cookhouse for for them. So in terms of their meals and for dinner, lunch, everything is provided. So it's it's carefully planned, you know, in terms of for in terms of the di- diet. Oh, yeah. Like chefs there as well. And yes, definitely. And um, I think uh, 
for the players uh, when you just come for training for example like what i'm wearing right now i can just come in for training just like this because everything else there will be provided mm-hmm. so I, i'll just go there in this and leave there in this so so i would say facilities is definitely we hit into some fan support even for an average game you would see maybe about five thousand fans coming in to watch and yeah. good tv coverage and good media coverage. yes definitely definitely i think uh for sunday um because there was once when i finished a course and we had uh we went for dinner and we started to watch a game from six and although i think finished at 10 or 11 because of there were three back-to-back games and everybody it was was full house you know know, people watching from 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 the restaurants so you can imagine if people coming in so the stadium itself definitely is going to be filled up yeah Yeah. I mean, and good support too. That we, um, Rekha was involved in the Mekon Cup this year, so mm-hmm. we got a little bit up close and personal with uh, Bururam, who, who went on to win that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they won the, the League Cup and won the uh, the Thai Premier League as mm-hmm. well. Um, what's the Thundercastle like? Um, what a name! <laughs> what a name for a stadium, right? I love it. Uh, I would say, I think Bururam is like the immensity of. Uh, uh, you know thailand lots of money and they have the ability to bring in very top class players uh i think if you watch do you go plays yeah it's definitely top class different I, I think different definitely different league from from the rest of the players um what does it offer i mean presumably the money's good in, in yeah. thailand yeah mm. well, what's the average that a, a first team would, would earn uh if you're from if you are playing in international football, you'll be earning probably around uh, between twen- twelve to twenty thousand US no, Singapore Same dollars. Okay. Yeah, but I think um, good, man. yeah, foreign players would definitely earn much more than that. Well, who's the, who's who's the top earner at the moment? I have no idea. Only because <laughs> whenever we get John Wilkinson in. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. in, in to, to do some punditry work or whatever mm-hmm. he does, he always reminds me that he was the top the top earner in the, mm. the TPL when he played for as an NC Police United I think yeah. he played for um, okay and support is crazy too right mm-hmm. really I mean do you, are you recognized when, when you're walking around the bird park uh, no <laughs> <laughs> no not at the moment but uh, I think they, they, they know that I'm I'm working in, in uh, for China FC uh, I think mainly is because I don't look local, so definitely they know that oh this guy because it's a very small city, so definitely they will know that who's uh, who's working there and who's not. Yeah, tell us more about the China province. What what goes on there? Uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 well, that's good, nothing. right? Because you can concentrate on your. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. That's why I said you know, some of the main reasons I would I can definitely you know focus uh, solely on football there. Okay. And. I, I don't have a car there so transportation wise there's no public transportation at all so but the fortunate thing is that they they put me in the house very close to the workplace so i i wouldn't need a transport i see you got a few yeah. festivals you can go to the Strawbird fair the china's product fair you got the red cross fair as well yeah <laughs> something to look forward to eh? um we are <laughs> we're with um uh, first team coach mm-hmm. at uh, TPL side China uh, it's Ferdas Kassim and then now you are flying off uh, today's Tuesday right so you're flying off today back to Thailand because you got a pre-season friendly tomorrow yeah and who's that against uh, a, a local Thai team okay mm-hmm. do you remember I've actually written it down I can't find where it is um who what are they called <laughs> I think on Tong and yes and correct yeah. well done yeah uh, so they're just the local team is it so when does the season start in the uh on paper it's supposed to start on 27th february but i think with all the things going on with the thai fa uh, the it's not yet confirmed when exactly it will start okay what things going on with the thai FA? i think the i think most people know that the thai fa was suspended by uh, by fifa so uh, is it not the thai fa but the president was suspended for fifa so for 45 days and then they have to get a new president in so if the so they have to have on, elections and yeah they have to get an election so, oh, right. so that's how, is this, hang on, has this happened quite recently have i just yes. not, okay yes, good yes very recent okay good i'm just wondering whether my research was not as good really okay so that's pretty major so the yeah. whole the whole league could be suspended exactly so that's what we are worried about you know um but hopefully if if let's say they get 
they managed to get a new president in, then I think we will go on with it. Thailand. What is it with Asian football and <laughs> getting suspended by FIFA? Indonesia, <laughs> Kuwait. I think mostly of it because of the government interference. But exactly, Singapore's mm. like got to get its act together, right? <laughs> right. Let's get a new president in. Mm-hmm. Hey, Phyllis, thanks for coming in. Mm-hmm. It's been good. To, oh, yeah, no, I didn't get to uh, match day. What happens match day? Are you shouting and screaming on the side? No, 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 definitely not. I think yeah, that's the job of a head coach. So my, my job will be to just, um, uh, because at the same time, I'll be analyzing the opponent um, and also the team uh, performance or so any tactical things, inputs that I could give. So during the uh, match itself, anything I feel necessary for me to give input, so I'll just... Okay. Have you got real-time stats running at the time? No, 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 definitely not. You need to talk, talk to Benoit Croissant. <laughs> he's selling all the the GPS stuff. Yeah. I don't know, I forget what company he's with, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. talk, he's, he's, in, he's been in talking to Burium. Yeah, they're all with all the GPS at, sewn at, into at their the, shirts. At the moment now, we are using the GPS, but I think right. uh, it's only for the preseason. Right. Uh, when it comes to the... I, I'm not sure whether the TPL, because from what I've heard, is that the TPL uh, regulations, they don't allow yeah, you following it, yeah. So how good are you at Football Manager? 2016 2016 i hardly played them <laughs> right you've never played football manager yeah definitely i started i think <laughs> i think i think uh my ambition or aspiration to become a coach actually started from a championship that's manager. mental right yeah. that's <laughs> mental so I, you you would remember the old championship manager yeah right? I, I i played them when i was i would say 10 yeah 10 no 11 11 years. Just those sleepless nights. Yeah, definitely, Just definitely. One more game. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I even had run ins with my parents because, you know, yeah. at 11 you shouldn't be sleeping late, but I would be playing at the about 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. 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 I remember my wife at the time was yeah. like, what are you doing? I'm like, just like I was discussing with Nick. Mm. I just want to get through the summer. I just want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got any football manager or championship manager tips? For now, I think there are better people there <laughs> to give tips. You know, back, okay. back. What, what was your team that you would choose? Uh, back then, yeah. when I was, uh, I would, I always pick Newcastle. I don't know for whatever reason. Bit yeah. of cash, potential to do well. Yeah, but but I remember when I first started with Newcastle, Alan Shearer was always out for about six months. <laughs> 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 that was <okay. laughs> that so I was just fun. looking for. But have you played Championship man- Football Manager with uh, China? Uh, no, but okay. I I did try. I mean, because I wanted to look at the players, yeah. uh, so I did. I download. Uh, I bought them for just for that purpose, you know, to look at the TPL players, you know, nice. just to 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 familiarize myself with them. Okay. Mm. Hey, good luck for the season. Thank you very much. Hope you, I hope you finish above um, Army, <laughs> just so you can give one over to Hassan, right? <laughs> That'd be fun. Right? Oh, in fact, I think we'll be playing them. I think next week uh, for a friendly match. Oh, nice. Yeah. So do, can you do us a massive favor? Because we obviously love to mm-hmm. see you guys doing well and mm-hmm. do, doing well ab- abroad. Because you know, like Safandi Ammo have done it before. Can you take some pictures or some videos? Yeah, we'll try. If you see him, take a selfie or just a video going. Mm-hmm. You know, red card says hi and send it to us, and we'll, we'll stick. And they'll love to see it here <laughs> in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, Fedas, many thanks for your time. Thank you very uh, much. Good luck on your travel. Good luck for the season as well. Uh, so there you go, Fedas Kassim, um, uh, first team coach of uh, TPR side China. Tomorrow on Barclays Premier League Live, Bournemouth versus Arsenal from the Vitality Stadium. Onto the boot of Stanislas who controls it and then a Foby with a diving header and Manoni gets a hand to it, but he can't keep it out. Still going, Gosling. Richie, great save and a Foby turns it in. And Bournemouth take the lead, three and three for Benic Abobi. Full credit to the players for how they responded really to the challenges set this season so far. I've uh, been very, very pleased with the mentality of the group, how they've approached the big games and the, and the games against the teams around us recently. We've responded really well, so the next challenge is now is to continue that consistency and that's what we're looking to do. Turns it back into Campbell. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! And for the first time tonight, the Gunners lead at Anfield in what is turning into an absolute classic. Cross it goes towards Giroud, headed one by Dummett up in the air. Giroud's going to win the second ball. It's towards Cotillioni, who pokes it home for Arsenal. And it is not on Cotillioni who breaks the deadlock. You have to believe in what we do. I t- uh, we are just to reassure you, we do not try to go down. You know, <laughs> 45, we have 45 points. 
And uh, if you panic uh, in the position you are in, you have nothing to do in our job. Followed by Chelsea versus Manchester United from Stamford Bridge. Evades everybody else in the middle will come for Ivanovic to try and return it. Oh, Chelsea lead this time. Diego Costa on the near post to apply the finishing touch. They've made their pressure play. Zuma gets it up in the air. Ivanovic picks it up. Chance for John Terry! John Terry! For Chelsea in the eighth minute of added time! His first goal of the season! To get on fourth position, you need to, you need to win, win, win. So that's very, very, very difficult. And the other two legs are uh, FA Cup, which we have now to confront uh, Man City with, which I consider is uh, a very early final. And Champions League, that's where we're aiming. Rooney made an excellent run through. It's come instead to Marcel. Here's Rooney! And this time he's got his goal! 3-0 to Manchester United! Short in towards Fellaini, out to the bar! Rooney! Oh, it's a phenomenal volley on the rebound by Wayne Rooney! Manchester United lead at Anfield! And pretty much against the run of 78 minutes of play, Manchester United lead Liverpool by goal to nil! We have the feeling, and, and that's because we are winning in a row uh, two times and, and with uh, Sparkling football, I think, with goals, with clean sheets against opponents who were in, in a great form. It's not a difference in my feeling. That's all coming up tomorrow on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. Yeah, it's Sunday night. It's the Andy Pendant Show. Thanks for your company. Gong Ziva Chai, everyone. Um, chance for you to win a Tampanese Rovers signed shirt. All you have to do is tell us who Tampanese will play in the opening game of the S League, which kicks off uh, this coming weekend. Uh, it's a Monday night fixture, by the way. There's a clue. Uh, getting involved at Red Card Sports on Twitter. Getting involved with us right now is tipster extraordinaire Alan Bentley. Hi, Al. Hi, Andy. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, everything's rosy here at Red Card Sports Radio. Looking forward to plenty of fixtures tonight, not least in the Barclays Premier League, which sees uh, three of the big guns go at it, but also a Bournemouth side who somehow are putting a bit of a run together as they take on the Gunners. Yeah, I like Bournemouth. I mean, they did lose 2-0 to Arsenal back on the 28th of December, but I think they're decent. And I think they're a big price in this one. They've beaten some big teams at home. They've not disgraced themselves by and large away at home uh, throughout the course of the season. And, you know, Arsenal, I'm still not entirely convinced about them. The seat still can be a bit flaky to me. I certainly give Bournemouth a chance, given I think Bournemouth will score. And as I often say, and as I, well, as I always say, Andy, if you can score, you've certainly got there for a chance of winning. So Bournemouth at 3-1, to 4.0, I think are a big price, mate. And Benekophobi seems to have settled down extremely well. He does. I mean, there were those who were doubting him, but as you say, he scored goals. He's helped. I mean, they had they've had crippling injuries, Bournemouth. Don't forget that earlier on in the season when their form did dip. But Eddie Howe's sort of uh, gathered things together. He's got the troops back as one. And uh, yeah, I think they're. I think they'll be safe, uh, given the fact that you know, as I've said throughout the course of the season, irrespective of recent results with one or two teams, I do think that uh, Sunderland and uh, who's the team we were bottom now, of course, Aston Villa are the, comfortably the worst teams, which leaves just one relegation spot. I think Bournemouth will be safe and I think they can give cause a hammer blow to Arsenal's title hopes at uh, the old Dean Court today. Yeah, the first time that Bournemouth have ever hosted Arsenal in a competitive game. And Benica it's astonishing. It's yeah. an astonishing story. You know, I remember when I was at Sky going down there. They were in the old fourth division. They were in danger of going down. They had a, a new chairman called Trevor Watkins, a young guy, and they got the uh, the community right behind them. And you look at what they've done. It really is astonishing. And I, I, I hope I take my hat off to them. I, I'd like Bournemouth. I like Eddie Howe as a manager. And I hope people, you know, irrespective of what happens to Bournemouth in the future, I hope people realise the calibre of Eddie Howe and the job that he's done in getting them A, to the uh, Premier League and B, keeping them there thus far. I think he's an outstanding young manager and destined for bigger things. At midnight tonight, Stanford Bridge sees Chelsea hosting Manchester United. Can you get excited about this, Al? 
I can from a betting perspective, Andy, not from watching it, because I think both teams are ordinary. I mean, I'm not getting carried away by Chelsea's victory against Milton Keynes Dons last week. The MK Dons were hopeless and gave them all the space in the world. They drew nil ill, of course, in midweek against Watford when things were tighter. And Manchester United, again, you know, they've improved of late. A bloodless victory in midweek over Stoke. Again, an easy victory in the Cup at Derby. And to me, Manchester United are a whopping price at this one. Three to one against what I still consider to be a moderate, moderate Chelsea side. I know United haven't won there since that infamous game in 2012, which saw the two players sent off, the two Chelsea players sent off, and the barricading of uh, Mark Clattenburg in the referee's room. But I think uh, Man United at 3-1, to one, even though they're, no, they're not great, I think they're a big, big price at Chelsea, who continue to disappoint for me, Andy. And they always seem to find it hard to break down teams and make it just too difficult for them. Who's that, sorry? Chelsea. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, to me, there's such a lack of pace in the side. Uh, Eden Hazard has come back. But he was never the, the, a flying winger as such. He was more skillful. He's apologised to Jose Mourinho. I can't understand why they let Ramirez go, because Ramirez is one player who, from the middle of midfield, will get ahead of the front men. And I think it's a bonkers situation, a bonkers move them letting him go. They're too easy to defend against. They play one up front, and that man is Costa, who, again, hasn't got great pace. So I agree with you. I think when the opposition make it difficult for Chelsea a bit like with Liverpool Liverpool are another team with no pace when the opposition close you down and make it difficult uh, Chelsea struggle to break those teams down as I say Milton Keynes Dons played to, uh, completely into their hands Manchester United won't just you mentioned Ramirez it does it register in England Al just how much money is being spent in China hello Al is he there yeah, I'm still there, yes. I'm yeah. still here, Andy. I was just wondering, does it register how much money is being spent in China, in England, You know, with all the, the, the big money signings that the Chinese Super League is making? I'll tell you what's registered, particularly the fact that this Teixeira has gone there. Because, you know, uh, whilst I've mentioned Ramirez, and I think it was a shock, you know, and the, the meant to be big money for the likes of Oscar that was um, bandied about. The fact that Liverpool couldn't get this guy for whatever reason, and yet he's now gone to China. I think that has sort of set a mini Richter, scale, Richter you know, uh, shockwaves through and the Richter scale is on alert. Um, I still think, obviously, there's a huge, huge way to go for China to be a world power in terms of football. But I think the signing of Teixeira is just certainly raised one or two people's eyebrows the fact that people like Sven's there and whatever well neither here nor there because he'd go anywhere for the money but uh, that move from Shakhtar to over to China for Teixeira yes it's raised one or two eyebrows particularly at Anfield I can tell you uh, elsewhere in League One tonight Port Vale against Coventry City Barnsley Berry Fleetwood against Shrewsbury they're proper games aren't they <laughs> well, Fleetwood's always a difficult place to go, right up on the uh, the coast. Uh, I do like Fleetwood. They've got Stephen Presley as manager. Shrewsbury Town, Nicky Mellon, used to play up that way for Tramway, of course. Coventry on a bit of a poor run at the moment. Um, then track at Port Vale, and I think they will. And Barnsley playing really well at the moment. Yeah, some interesting games down in the lower leagues, Andy, yes. And Serie A, we've got... Uh, oh, the big pick there's got to be Roma Sampdoria. That brings back just memories, that fixture. Well, it does, and Roma, of course, having a mini renaissance with the old man back in charge, the new manager. Uh, they've won the last couple, and I, I do fancy Roma to win that one. Sam Dory have disappointed of late. They had the City derby last week, but they've disappointed of late. Um, I think I'm right in saying, I mean, forgive me, I think Empoli are a big prize. I think Empoli are playing tomorrow, is that right? Um, are they are they home tomorrow? Are they playing tomorrow, Empoli, who continue yeah, to be Empoli one of those tonight, teams? tonight, they take on um, uh, Atalanta away from home. That's right, yeah, Empoli memory serves me correct they're a big price for that one Andy um, so watch out for watch out for uh, Empoli uh, and, and, and again then there's games in Spain and in Portugal yeah Levante but... Barcelona Real Betis up against Valencia Celta Vigo against Sevilla Granada up against Real Madrid what's the reaction been like to the abuse that Gary Neville is getting at Valencia. Well, Al. I have to say, from the from the Liverpool end of the M62, it's been hilarity um, <laughs> because of a quote he said. You know, if he'd have been on the receiving end of a seven 0 or whatever, he'd have walked away and wouldn't have been able to look in, in his family in the eye. And then that's exactly what happened to him the other day. And there's still, you know, there's still a short price, relatively short price, for the visits to Betis for the trip to Betis. I know Betis is struggling at the moment, but Valencia in absolute free fall, and you do wonder how long he can continue. And especially. With 
with the ogre in many respects that is Rafa Benitez hanging over him. The word is that Valencia have already spoken to Rafa Benitez and sounded him out. And it wouldn't take uh, too many more defeats for Valencia and Gary Neville for Rafa to be back in charge at the club where, of course, he made his name. And that would cause further ire in the red half of Merseyside. <laughs> but further, you know, not further ire, further laughter, I should say. <laughs> exactly. Uh, elsewhere in the Bundesliga, Hamburger up against FC Cologne, Hoffenheim up against Darmstadt. Does anything else jump out of you in France, Al? There's Lille, Rennes, Bordeaux against Saint Etienne, Marseille taking on Paris Saint Germain. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that historically would have been a massive game, but Marseille haven't been great in recent years, not great this season, and Paris Saint-Germain are just head and shoulders above the race, above the rest. Rennes have got a chance at Lille. Lille continue to struggle to score goals, uh, and Rennes above them in the league. But the French league's a funny one. You know, the, 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 if you take away Paris Saint-Germain, the much of a muchness... Yeah. Um, I tend to leave that one alone with notable exceptions as we've seen with the, the, you know, a couple of the tips in recent weeks no, I'd be leaving it alone although if you push me I suppose Ren at a price against Lille um, Elsewhere Al just a quick mention Ajax Feyenoord that's quite a big game in the Dutch area division well, it, well well, again, but Feyenoord have really slumped in recent weeks. They were, they were at the top of the Eredivisie and they haven't won, I think, in their last four. They've lost the last four. They've been really poor, Feyenoord. Uh, Kout has gone there. He's been scoring goals. But other than that, they've been poor. And I know Ajax have uh, only drawn the last couple, but I'd fancy Ajax all day long in that one. Feyenoord, until they show signs of improvement, I think they're a team to leave alone, Andy. Just finally, Al, let's, let's, let's get into Scotland because we, we rarely talk about Scottish football and for a very good reason, but Hearts against Hibernian? Well, I mean, I know the, the Hibs centre-forward uh, is absolutely licking his lips at uh, the prospect of facing Hearts. They've drawn them in the Cup as well. They've drawn, got them in the Cup. And the thing, the big story, of course, north of the board is what's happening with the Celtic manager. They lost in the League Cup. They lost to Aberdeen in midweek. And he's under huge pressure, the Celtic boss, and we'll have to see who takes over them. That's the big story north of the border with the continued resurgence of uh, Glasgow Rangers, who I know they're a league down, but they'll be in the Scottish Premier next season. And I wonder what price they'll be to actually win the Scottish Scottish Premier next next time around. Watch out for Rangers and watch out for a new boss at Parkhead in the not too distant future, Andy. Talking of new bosses, uh, uh, any mention of a new boss out for Chelsea uh, come next season? Yeah, I mean the word is that the, this man, the man Conte, has already been approached. And if you know the papers are correct, he's already more or less uh, more or less signed. I think the problem is that the likes of Chelsea and Manchester United they back themselves into the corner. I think they all hope that Guardiola would join them. And now it looks as though Mourinho, you sent that begging letter to Manchester United, will get his wish and he'll go there, despite the fact that certain board members simply don't like him. And Conte, who, let's be honest, wouldn't have been top of the Chelsea hit list, looks as though he's going to walk into that job. So, yes, there are uh, managerial moves afoot. But as I say, I, I'm, I'm convinced that Pep Guardiola was top of the list for both Manchester United and Chelsea when they drew up their list. Just finally, Al, what, uh, what, what is the, the, whose celebrity shoulders will you be rubbing up, up against this Well, week? again, I, I, I'll be doing, a th hopefully, a bit of stuff with Ronnie O'Sullivan next week. Uh, I said last week, I find him a fascinating character uh, for his mental attitude. You know, the fact that he says if he goes into a tournament knowing he's going to win, he will win. So I do I, I enjoy that. Other than that, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm possibly going up to Liverpool again. And we'll see see uh, who we we'll bump into. But uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan very much on the radar, Andy. But you never know. In the ever-changing celebrity world of Big Al, <laughs> things can change in an instant. <laughs> Alan, thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. See you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, Alan Bentley there, the best tips there in the business as we look forward to tonight's games. That's about it from us today. Hope you enjoyed uh, those interviews that we brought to you. I thought Cheryl was awesome. Uh, for Douse, well, you could prove... That you can, really the sky is the limit. Gongzi Fa Chai to everyone. Happy holidays. And um, yeah, hope everything's good. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio.